everybody, Average Game here. So, thought I'd do a quick little video before I leave for work in about an hour. Um, this weekend, from the uh, from the event that I played, um, I definitely noticed, and I was talking to a couple people, but the fact that there's pretty much no difference between one mech to another, to be 100% honest with you. Um, in the end, I mean, we just know, like, we all kind of noticed that, uh, well, there's really two two things really that that make up what kind of mech you're gonna build um, the first one is are you gonna want a high alpha or do you want to do DPS so those who don't know um, a high alpha is this option down here let me turn on my monitor capture on that way you can see my mouse so this is my alpha right here theoretically I got 46 damage downrange in one second, um, or one shot, from all my guns, all at the same time. So all six of these puppies can all fire at the same time at 46 damage, and there you go, right? Now, theoretically, if you look at armor, right, armor right now is 368. So theoretically, I can blow through my own front armor with my own alpha, technically. Or am I right torso? Don't know if that's true. I, I'm gonna have to work that out and stuff like that, but I can still do a significant amount of damage with this with this high alpha. Now, is it the highest? Hell no. Um, there are some that are even higher, but I digress. So I noticed that there's other alpha strikes where everyone fires the majority of the weapons all at once, and then they back off, cool down, and then do it again. Now and then they'll break down into smaller shots just to kind of, you know, take a couple shots, defend themselves and all that stuff in the short term, and then do another high alpha again. Um, or there's DPS players, which is people that deal out incremental damage all through the match. So you don't just do a high alpha, sit back and take a couple steps, do another one. It's, you know, a steady amount of damage that you put out, right? That's usually with, like, auto cannons, um, PPCs... LRMs, things like that, things that you can, you know that will, you know, they can, that, that can dish out small amounts of damage, but you can do it a lot. Um, so that's damage per second, maybe that you can put in a lot of damage overall throughout a match, or how long, you, or how long you expect to, uh, to live. Now, we kind of realize that there's only those two, those two things really, when designing any mech. It's, am I going to do a DPS build, or am I going to go for a high alpha? So, for example, this guy, it's definitely a mix, you know, I definitely went the alpha. But then, with another mech, say, one of my medium mechs, for example, my enforcer here, my 5P, I went with two auto cannons. So it's DPS, that's damage per second. Because I can just constantly lob out rounds, and you only have to worry about heat all too much. So, with that in mind, we are trying to think what 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 can make everything a little different, right? Because in the end, it's all about just damage. That's it. I mean, the you know, there's nothing forcing you other than the fact that if I don't run a medium, there's not going to be a match. So with that in mind, we started talking about things like dynamic damage. And things that could be used to offset the quirk system and stuff like that, because as Paul said a while ago, it was more of a band-aid situation and a temporary thing that they added in the quirks. And they're trying to figure out ways to, to kind of get around the, the quirk system. So, with that in mind, I was talking with one of my friends who's been playing the game for a while, in uh, one of the other units, and we kind of came up to a couple different... a couple different things. A couple different uh, options that both made us kind of go... Interesting, interesting. So the first one was dynamic damage. So if I load out here, I wanted to do it this way so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have, you know, my right torso, which is this right here, up on this screen, just so I can explain it a lot better. So with dynamic damage, you see that you have all your different slots here. Now, through dynamic damage, what it could do, and I know this can be done, only because I know of other games that are made in the same engine. So, 
But what could happen is in this section here, when someone actually hits, so right now it's just all ammo, case, and jump jets. So theoretically, uh, we'll say this little vent here is the intake for the for the jump jets, and then up here is the exhaust for the jump jet. Now, if someone hits me from the back and hits me right here, that does immediate damage to the jump jet, where it won't be as powerful. So, for example, when I'm jumping, my mech will actually pull to the right, because this jump jet got damaged. Um, also, say I take in a shot on the intake over here, same thing. The mech will pull to the right as I, as I jump. Um, also, associated with that, since above that is a couple slots, quote-unquote, where I have ammo, if I took consistent damage to that one slot, or these slots up here, not only is there a chance for the ammo to explode, even though there's case, but the, the rounds themselves could cook off. Meaning that, as I get hit, you'll see a couple rounds go flying out. Possibly do damage to my arm. My head. And I lose ammo. And it's just that spot. So it's dynamic, meaning that it does damage, like where you hit, does damage associated with what your doll is over here. So, that's one thing, right? So, for example, if someone hits my arm, there's the actuator here and up here. And there's the actual weapon. So if someone constantly hits the weapon, it'll, it'll knock out the weapon. Won't do much to my overall damage, like to my health, to my, to my mech, but if they hit the actuators, I'll notice that as I'm, as I'm walking, my right arm won't be as accurate anymore. Because it's being damaged by the actuators. Or it'll take a while for that arm to to move. Same with the other one. Same with your knees as well. Your knees and your th and your uh, hips here. If you get hit enough in the kneecap and in the waist, same thing happens there. Your leg slowly starts moving, and you start moving in a circle type thing, where that leg is is working slowly. Um, it's an idea. You'll notice that your mech starts pulling to the left a little bit more. So as you're walking, it to turn to the right just that little bit more to continue walking in a straight line, basically. Because that right leg is pushing you to the left, because the left leg is damaged. That's one thing. Another one is, weapons get a chance to do a critical hit. So, for example, in most in some games that have to do with armor, or ammo, or um, the projectile weapons, so such as these auto cannons here, there's a chance for your weapon, for your gun, to go straight in through the armor, right in, and do an immediate, you know, explosive round. So, for example, in War Thunder, it'll show you if your round penetrated and what your round did. Now, I'm not expecting anything like that, but what I would like to see is the round hit, like, say, here, and, it all, and like, on the paper doll in the top right-hand corner, right, it'll say critical hit. And it would show the mech getting hit here, and it'll show the round penetrating the armor, or just show generic piece of armor with the ammo, with, with the round hitting on it, and just say, critical hit. Or even just a little logo that has a line with a round hitting it, and breaking through it. So the piece of armor, broken by a, by a shell, basically. Or even a, just a, a laser. Doesn't matter which. But that shows that I did a critical hit on this. Now, it would actually say, say I actually hit the vent here. Two, three times with some lasers, and then I got a lucky shot off with an autocannon. It hits, well, it doesn't do a critical hit, but it does a little damage. Then I hit it two or three more times. Now, say there's a 1 in 100, 1 in 100, so a 1% 1 chance that one of my rounds will actually go through this vent all the way and explode internally. So, theoretically, the round goes in, hits this jump jet, and blows it to high hell. So, what happens then is the slot above it and below it also get destroyed. So, theoretically, I could lose two tons of ammo, the ammo could cook off, and I could lose a jump jet. Obviously, that is internal damage and all that stuff. It's a good idea. Lasers, too. Laser goes in through, you know, my, you know, through the, the chest or whatever and hits something. That's one idea, right? One out of every X percentage is it does something to the to the mech. Now, say for example, um, I think on my left torso I have heat sinks. No, on my right arm I have, I don't have any heat sinks on this guy. Um, I think I have heat sinks on you. 
There we go. So on the left torso, uh, right here, we have our two lasers and we have a heat sink in here as well. So theoretically what they would do is you throw your, your stuff up here, right? But this laser would show up as right here, right at the bottom instead. Because it will show you where the actual lasers are on here. So it'll actually say, so it'll show you there's two energy slots, but it will show you exactly where they need to be, where they have to be on here, right? So, theoretically, what could happen is, if I hit a laser dead on, it would do damage to that as well. So, for example, if I hit this laser down here a bunch of times with weapons, it will decrease its efficiency. So, for example, it creates more heat. Um, it lasts longer and creates more heat. Um, it doesn't do as much damage. It's not as efficient, right? So it does overall damage and it affects the weapons and heat sinks and things like that that you have, right? So if I constantly hit the weapons, it affects the weapons. Heat sinks, same thing. Um, if I hit the heat sink wherever it would be in here, say it was like right here, if I hit it enough times, it would do damage to after I took down the, the armor. It also gives your mechs just that extra long ability to last a little longer too, right? So the game's you know, you may end up with three or four people left over at the end of each match, but in the end people do more damage and they're doing more specific system damage. Because one thing I did is I did a lot of homework and reading and stuff, and I noticed in the mechs, in the books and all stuff, not every time the mech would be destroyed. Like, both mechs would be, like, massively maimed, and then they would retreat from battle type thing. Um, so that's the, the, the chance to crit option, and the fact that, you know, when you hit weapons and stuff like that, it has the ability to damage what it hits after the armor is, is kind of melted off a little bit. Um, and another thing I had an idea of was, um, was a power output to your mech. So your engine has X amount of power input, so if you hit the engine, um, yeah, you have the ability to destroy it, but also you have the ability to decrease its effic efficiency through its power output. So if you hit the engine a few times, you you know, you may not actually knock the engine out, but you'll reduce the energy efficiency. So say, for example, um, all these weapons here have a power drain option as well. So the engine, I've got an XL230 in this puppy. It'll say the engine, engine puts out, so right here it'll say, the engine puts out um, whatever, right? It'll say out of the, you know, the rating or whatever, 230, say the engine output was 230 as well. It's a good reason why there should be a, a number rating now. So 230 is something power output. So a Gauss picks up, say, 100, and each one of these takes up, you know, 10, right? So that's 110, 20, 30, 40. So that's 140 power used up just for my weapons. Now, then there's your heat sinks and your computer systems and all that stuff. So it says overall, right, out of the 230, how much of that power is being used by your systems. So that way you can also include things like, you know, electronic systems um, into the game as well that use up power. So what happens is, if you hit the engine a few times, suddenly now you're like, well, shit, like my Gauss uses 100, each one of these uses 10, I don't have that much power anymore because my engine's taking some damage, so now I have to decide what weapons I'm going to use, or how I'm going to use it, because my engine is only able to put out X amount of power now because it's been damaged a few times. It's an idea. Um, so also, like, that brings into weapon efficiencies, right? Um, so, for example, this has an efficiency of at 100% power, it does X damage. Every percent, every little bit of power drain, it does a percentage less for uh, for damage, right? Same with the lasers. Um, the less power, the less duration, for example, and the less uh, you know damage they do. Same thing. So they'll end up going out shorter, um, not using up, say, for example, as much heat but you don't do as much damage. So one thing you can end up doing is putting a lighter engine on a mech so that you don't have enough energy to run some of these lasers at high velocities anymore. So you're doing like little little shots. Can you imagine how fast the pulse laser would be if you only had enough power to run it, say, for 50% of the time? At 50% of the damage? Wouldn't be too bad, right? Another thing would be like computer systems as well. So, for example, right now, if I went into my center torso, I just have the gyro the, and the engine. What if I could have computer systems? Like, for example, the clans have the targeting system, um, which helps you, you know, increases your zoom and all that stuff. 
already there is the targeting system built into your Mac, right? What if that took a slot? And you could swap it out for upgrades, something you can unlock in your skills. You can unlock additional cockpit modules, or um, uh, compu like, uh, computer systems, like um, something as simple as color changes to your cockpit, um, targeting reticle and targeting feedback system. Um, other ones are the ability to know what weapons are where on your torso. Um, for example, there's no way to know the weapon that you're shooting is on the left or the right, or on your head. It just says it's on your body or your arm. That's it. So that could be an upgrade module, where it puts in and it takes up, you know, whatever. Or it's just overall. It's like when you go to the modules down here, it just says um, systems, and you can click and drag things over, and things modify and, and upgrade your your overall cockpit sister syst like um, feedback systems. Um, so you also have the ability to personalize your mech with the new um, system that's coming in for like info gathering or stuff like that. Like, can you imagine building a heavy mech, even a heavy medium? So, so say this enforcer here, armor it up so it has as much armor as I can put on it. Put a couple, you know, medium lasers on it. But then in the cockpit, I have all these info systems. With the jump jets, I can jump around, find the guys. You should be there. Should be like um, you know, obviously there's an ECM, but then there should be additional electronic warfare systems, like sending out fake signals. Like if you have a module that says, um, well, obviously there's jamming, and there's the you know, which is basically what ECM is. Um, but then there's the ability to send out fake signals. So for example, I'm an enforcer, but I tell it. Okay, in my unit, there's you know, it'll it'll look at the, how many people are playing, and it'll start switching out what each player is. So I can actually tell it. Okay, everyone in this match is an atlas according to me. So if anywhere everyone was in, is in my my bubble, everyone on the other team thinks there's like four atlases, right? So it'll kind of get screwed up. Like so, it'll it upgrades everybody. So everyone gets like fake information a little bit, kind of like uh, you know the anti-info gathering system, where it also will load the mech up, but then won't load the proper weapon loadout. Like it'll have like question marks, or um, you can see the mech, you can see what it is, but then the name doesn't match. Like the class doesn't match, the chassis doesn't match, something like that, right? Like you see, it's a it's it's an atlas, but then it pops up saying unknown unknown mech. But then shows what, uh, but and then doesn't show all the weapons on it, stuff like that, right? So you know, that also brings in the ability for them to get damaged. So right now, when you're playing, you get shot a bunch of times, you can still shoot back. What if these systems that are in the center torso here? Um, how do I? Oh, yeah, here we go, center torso. So what if, or even in the head here? Right, because sensors and cockpit are, are right there. So if we could modify that. Because when you strip all your weapons down, it still shows that there's there's tonnage on the mech. So you should be able to swap these out. Just saying. So, like, you could switch it out for long-range sensor systems. Long-range targeting systems. Things like that. Um, reduce your life support. If you don't think you're going to last that long. Which is what I would do. Uh, <laughs> but, it will give you all these different options, right? So with the computer systems, they would also have the ability to get damaged. So if you wanted to say, um, you know, um, say it was a um, info gathering um, module that you wanted, um, it would take up X amount of slots. So you'd have to be like, well, do I want better sensors, or do I want the ability to give the other team false information as to who's on our team and who they're targeting, or even give them fa fake blips on their radar, which would be really good. Um, there also would be a nice thing where if, I specifically picked this guy because of, if you look, he's got kinda, almost from every angle, there's angled armor. Quite a few stuff, even, in the, even in the crotch here. So, ricochet rounds. 
Now that's not firing around, having it bounce off of, say, the ground or another mech, and then have it flying off and hit someone else on purpose. Or firing at the back of your buddy behind you, or in front of you, to hit the mech behind you. What I'm talking about is, I fire an auto-cannon round, it hits the flat part here. It obviously has the ability to pen or penetrate into the armor and do damage. If it's if it hits here, it has the the possibility of hitting this and then ricocheting into the arm. Or hitting here and ricocheting above or beyond, or even up here on the shoulders, or you know, to to bounce off. So that's one of my other thoughts, is is for rounds to bounce. Um, use it in modern modern armor, modern tanks, that's one of the things they're built for. Um, if you even look at the tanks that are in Mech Warrior, Mech Commander, um, and things like that, tanks are still built to bounce rounds. They're still built with slanted armor. Slanted armor is also thicker. So, theoretically, you know, I should be able to fire off, say, even machine gun rounds, I should be able to see them bounce off. Not just hit the mech and do damage. Or even an auto cannon round. An ultra cannon 20 should have an option of bouncing. You should be able to bounce that round off the person, which would be so cool. You hit the person right here, and the round bounces off, and hits their red arm. Right, like if it bounces, it'll go right in here. Right in there. You can do damage immediately to the, the, the left shoulder. Gyro. Immediately. Right, so that's something. Obviously, then that would bring in the fact that you'd be able to then modify your armor a little bit. Now, I don't mean like when you're looking at armor here. I I still mean like it is over here, but you should hit the get the ability to hit a button, like say the I button, for example, and it would make your mech completely see through, and you should be able to click the different spots where your armor is, and it would show in different colors how the armor is. Red being ex like you would be able to pick a weapon. And it would show you how what the odds are of that weapon doing damage, how much damage it would do, right? It would show that if it was a sustain, sustained fire, if it was an alpha strike from you know whatever, or you could pick a you know a generic mech build on the left, and it would show you what it could do to you. So that way you can know, build, and that increases survivability. You know, well that's the whole thing they're talking about, right? Is increasing time to kill. That is the time from the time you drop to the time you die. They want to increase your the amount of play time, right? This is some things that'll do it. Like increasing more people alive at the end of the match means that more damage was dealt. Makes the game a little bit more fun, right? If you're looking at this going, both my arms are gone, my left torso is totally tore up, my computer sisters are gone, I have no UI anymore, every round I'm firing is just blind. And every time I take a shot, my lasers only go for like a couple seconds. They're doing like maybe one or two damage. And there's a fucking raven running around with, you know, its counter system saying that there's an atlas fucking chasing me, but there is no fucking atlas. That would be fun. I have to admit, I would be extremely excited for that. Because you never know, there might be an atlas behind you. But you'd always be looking, because you don't know. Um... So what would also happen too, right? So right now, if I select this, so I go center torso, it shows where all this is. Now, engines automatically would hop up, right? Like if I was, if I select the center torso here, right, it would then say, kind of show the center torso on my mech. So it would be a more zoomed in option, where I can actually put what I want to put on there on the mech itself and have an actual dynamic, a real dynamic change. So every mech looks a little different. Now, weapons have their specific slots and their specific points, but it would show you. So if I went to my left torso, for example, it would show you, it would show me up at the top and here at the bottom, there is that dynamic or the specific weapon slot. So I'd have to click and drag my lasers into those two slots, right? And they would go there and there, no problem. But I would be able to then internally decide where my heat sinks are going to go, which would have maybe a possible different change to the way the mech looks, and my computer systems, heat sinks, and things like that. Which would then show, uh, you know, so that way I'm able to actually select the armor on top of it, and maybe increase the armor a little bit. Like, select different options and spots. And tweak the armor. Make it a little bit more personalized. Um, you know, that would be pretty good. And then obviously system upgrades, so, like, for example, right now, I just have, like, in your head, you have sensors. 
life support and cockpit. Why can't we upgrade those? Why can't we, in our skills, go in there and increase our sensor sensitivity um, and all that stuff? Right? I know there's the modules to add, but I mean, eh, it's kind of you know whatever. Plus, I'd also like to see a revamped armor system. Um, to be 100% honest with you, the armor system as it is now is very arcadey. I just basically say what my armor value is on my left arm, my right arm, center torso, left torso, and legs. What I would like to see is the ability to get an upgrade, instead of Furbus and Firebolt and all that stuff, reactive armor. So if a round hits my mech, so if it's an auto cannon round, the armor actually explodes towards the round instead. So it doesn't do damage to me, it just does damage to the round that hits it. Or, for example, the missiles. Um, have some sort of other option other than AMS to shoot down said missiles. Um, some sort of decoy system as well. That would, you know, when someone's, you know, firing missiles at me, I can hit a button and it fires up something that says, hey, I'm over here and I have, say, 20 seconds to get out of that spot before that gets either shot or just falls to the ground. You get X amount of those as well, right? So it's kind of like, um, you know, submarine countermeasures, um, smoke for uh, from mech, from uh, from tanks, which, I mean, that's one other thing, too, I've noticed. I mean, some of these mechs, right, this is a 50-ton mech. A Leopard 2A6 tank is 67 tons, fully loaded with everything on it with uh, even the cage around it. So, technically, like, if you were to look at modern tanks right now and compare it to, say, these guys. Now, I know these guys are all invented in, like, the 70s and the 80s and stuff before some of these tanks were even invented. But, I mean, we should be able to put tanks in this game. Tanks are in the lore. Tanks are in Mech Warrior, all the other games. Um, tanks are in Mech Commander. Um... I would love, 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 love the ability to drop in a 2052 tank. I think there's one called the Rommel, or it's basically just a huge, huge cannon or a, a dual gauss, and sit there and run in support of a bunch of mechs in my unit. Because mechs are supposed to be these very rare things, right? And with the way we're playing, and the fact that everyone you know dies at the end of every match and all that stuff. It kind of beats the purpose of, of the rarity of the mech, right? So I know, you know, everyone obviously wants to drive the robots and all that stuff, but I would also like to drive some of the support vehicles that are known in the game too, right? Like, I think one's called the uh, the Striker um, Missile System, which is a LRM-100 or something like that, which all it does is it just, 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 just lobs missiles like a motherfucker. It takes uh, forever to reload. But it just launches these missiles like a motherfucker. It's from uh, Mech Commander. I have to look back into it to see what it was called again. But it's basically an LRM carrier. It looks like an MLRS, but it's just bigger. So I would like to see them bring in start, start bringing in support weapons, support vehicles, and things like that for for other be for people to play too. Because um, personally, for me, knowing how tanks work and all that stuff, I like that one weapon. I know I can depend on it and I can do things with it, and I can line up my round, line up my target, and then hit someone. With this, I mean, there's... With the lasers, yeah, it's point and click, and you hit the person, no problem. Auto cannons, a ghost, obviously to lead your targets and things like that, and machine guns as well. Um, LRMs, you lock on, fire and forget almost. Um, you can fire them blindly as well. That's uh, no big deal there. But what I wouldn't mind is is tanks, and uh, infantry fighting vehicles with with, you know, missiles on them. Um, scouting vehicles. Um, I can't remember where there was one, like, it was a little scouting hover, like a little hover tank, um, with an ECM. Now, that would be awesome. You're sitting there in a little hover tank, seeing these huge robots fight over you, and no one's even paying attention to you, because no, one no one's even thinking that's a hover tank, because you're hiding in a little, in a, inside a building. That would be awesome. Mad, just, just crazily awesome. Or even sitting there in a tank, seeing these huge robots fight above you. Taking huge shots at each other. And you're sitting there in a little tank, taking pot shots with a, with a ghost. You know, and knowing that any of these mechs at any second could totally fuck you up. So, 
that's uh, just a couple of ideas. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, there may be another video out later today. Um, but yeah, I gotta run to work. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to, uh, see when you, if you see me on the battlefield, give me a shout out, say hi. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like the video, hit like. If you don't like it, hit dislike and leave me a message, tell me why. Um, comments are always appreciated. I read, I read every single comment. Um, that comes out for every single video. I may not respond, but, uh, yeah, if I like it, I'll like it. <laughs> anyway, see you guys on the battlefield. Bye-bye.